This illustration deals with the ampacity uh, of conductors, mainly uh, speaking, and it's, uh, this section is uh, in accordance with 366.23, A is in apple, and B is in boy. The purpose of change is a revision. And this revision has been made to clarify that 366.22 uh, relates to the number of conductors in a steel metal auxiliary gutter and 366.23 relates to the ampacity of conductors in the sheet metal uh, auxiliary type gutter. The adjustment factor requirement is not within the scope of 366.28. The revision eliminates, duplicates requirements for deleting the adjustment factors in 366.22a and moving uh, it to 366.23a without the phrase, the provision of, which is unnecessary and does not increase usability of this section. The revision also clarifies that the adjustment factor required in 366.23a shall only apply where the number of current carrying conductors exceed 30 and any cross-sectional area of the sheet metal uh, auxiliary type gutter. The adjustment factor specified in 310.15C1 is in car apply to conductors in a non-metallic uh, auxiliary gutter and are applicable to the current carrying conductors up to and uh, including 20% fill specified in 366.22b, which is consistent with the requirement of 378.22 for a metal uh, raceway type, not raceway, excuse me, for a um, uh, auxiliary gutter or a metal wireway. Now, uh, looking at the illustration, uh, first I'd like to call out uh, if it's a sheet metal auxiliary gutter, it's 366.23a, and if you're uh, uh, a metal type wireway, you go to 378 around uh, 378.22 uh, to pick up some of the rules. Uh, but this is an auxiliary gutter, so. The uh, call out right above it with the arrow pointing to the auxiliary gutter. Conductors in auxiliary gutter, 30 or less current carrying adjustment factors for 310.15C1 shall not apply, and neither do control circuits used only for starting duty. Now, now make note of that, only for starting duty, uh, allowing a motor to start, and accelerate its load. And then, of course, we know that this is uh, outlined in 366.22a uh, uh, and b mainly. Now, uh, the third thing I'd like to point out is right below the conduits that are nippled out of the auxiliary gutter at the bottom. And it says for determining current carrying conductors and uh, derating factors, we'd see 310.15 is an ed in the NEC for these uh, regulations. Now, uh, notice the fourth thing is the 20% fill pointing to the uh, auxiliary gutter to the right of the illustration. And we're allowed a 20% fill area, 366.22a, uh, non-metallic, 366.22b, uh, and also, I would uh, we have reference 366.23 A and B. Now, uh, our designing electro, uh, electrical system book uh, shows all these calculations uh, about these auxiliary gutters. What is an auxiliary gutter? What is a uh, metal wire wireway, etc. Now, the next thing I would like to review uh, is the notes. Note one to the right. At the top of the illustration, it states current carrying conductors include ungrounded phase conductors and grounded 
neutral conductors as outlined in 366 uh, 22B and uh, I believe uh, 310.15 is in ed. Note 2 is in ed. To the left of the illustration at the top of the auxiliary gutter says when conductors and metal gutter are 30 or less, the current carrying conductor adjustment factors that are required uh, in 310.15C1 shall not apply for 360.22A. And then, of course, uh, uh, Thirdly, we've already talked about it below it, so uh, that would kind of uh, wrap up uh, uh, this revision that has taken place. And notice, if I want to determine the size of a bus bar uh, or bus bars that would be installed inside this auxiliary gutter, uh, I could look at 366.23a, and if I had a quarter by four inch bus bar, multiply that times a thousand, and that would give you the amount of amps you could put on that bus bar uh, uh, based on it being copper. If it was aluminum and it was a quarter by four, that'd be times 700, and that would give it to you uh, for uh, aluminum. Now notice, many times the inspector would look at this auxiliary gutter, and you see uh, the conduit here to the right comes down to a maybe a disconnect and then measurement from that disconnect over and if you're over 30 foot they classify you as a wire way by 366.12 B is in boy so uh, that's how you would classify a wire way a nipple would be two foot or less in length and we know we would get that in the note four, I believe it is, to chapter eight to table nine. And then we'd all or, or pick it up in uh, table one to chapter nine, note four, excuse me. Uh, then we know anything over uh, two foot, you become a wireway. If we reviewed 300.10, and I believe it's exception two, if you had a 10 foot length of a conduit, a raceway, uh, and it was open on both ends, and that would be a nipple. So that's kind of how we would classify raceways, uh, nipples, uh, wireways, uh, auxiliary gutters, and then if you wanted to classify your uh, cable tray, go to 392.2, and that gives you a classification so you know how to apply these regulations to get the correct size of a raceway, nipple, uh, auxiliary gutter, wireway, and, and uh, raceway, etc.